I do think I have a tendency toward getting myself involved in things that I'm not familiar with or don't understand as well, um, because I think it just fills in part of the puzzle for me, essentially. And so that's one piece of it. I think the other aspect, certainly at the time and as I've grown up in the company is, you know, my first question has always been, where do we need me? Like, what am I good at and where do I need to go? Um, in that case, again, what I'm good at is sort of the systems building it up in the first place. I'm comfortable with it not being perfect. And I can kind of iterate on that sort of thing. And so that was really just better suited to the customer org at that point than it was to the go-to-market organization or the product and engineering organization, as an example. Um and so I think that's much more how it happened and, and where I tend to to spend time. But it wasn't uh, it wasn't because I thought it would be in service of a different role. Mm-hmm. Um, I also last thing I'll say on it, I think to be again, wherever you sit in the organization, to be a little bit more of a, a versatile athlete <laughs> Um is has just again it's like what i'm better at i don't know this necessarily yeah. the best way to be but for me to feel like i'm operating at my best i really do need to have breadth uh as well as a, enough depth um and and so that's kind of how it ended up up happening more than anything and, and before we jump further ahead in terms of your, your progression there i think something that would be helpful for people is when you ask yourself where does the company need me how do you answer that question? Uh, I mean, with Bart, right? That was the the you know thing that he and I worked on, like would always be kind of in constant communication mm-hmm. about uh, over many years, not just in the COO role. And I know it'll fast forward to where we're going in this conversation, but just to 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 seed that conversation a bit. One of the things that is actually very difficult for me in the CEO role is like, nobody's telling me where I'm needed anymore, right? It's like <laughs> I have to set all that for myself in a really different way. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, it was really over the various roles I've had at Bluconic, there's been the titles, but it's actually much more of like the functional role. What am I doing? I never was just purely in any one particular area. Um, and, and candidly, that conversation is also included at times does Blue Conic still need me, right? Like, do I, am I actually serving this organization anymore? And Bart and I more than once over the course of those first, you know, now eight years, nine with, with me in the seat myself, but like four or five separate times over every two years or so of like, let's recalibrate. This is who I am. This is what I'm good at. Does the organization still need that? Does that serve us? Um, and if not, then we should have that conversation. Um, and I, again, going to the point of like weirdness of COO roles and how funky they are and how they are relative to the CEO, I think one of the reasons that I was able to be successful and why Bart and I worked so well together and why he was such a huge sponsor, obviously, of me having any of these opportunities um, was this implicit trust that we had that like I would raise my hand if it didn't feel like it was right and that he would be mm-hmm. honest with me if we kind of reached that point. Um, and I think that's a pretty special, unique level of candor to know that you both trust each other to kind of walk away when the moment is right. Um, that's pretty special. And I think that was a big piece of how any of this was able to work over the very long period of time that it did. 